Welcome back to Pile of Mopars. Uh, I had a week off, or we had a week off with a family reunion on China's side, but I still got to get this Barracuda ready for racing in a couple of weeks. Um, I've got it. Uh, I got an appointment for tomorrow morning for a front end alignment, which it desperately needs. Um, you've seen last video, uh, everything I, I did so far. I'll run you through a few things I just did and then as you can see, I got this orange truck and the crew cab to get out of the way and then I'm going to fire this baby up. I made sure I got home early enough that uh, me firing this up is not shouldn't disturb too many people. But anyway, I'll uh, show you what I'm up to. Okay, so I hooked up the thermostat housing. Uh, there's a thermostat but it's basically just gutted. It's sort of like a shield to slow the flow down but it's not actually acting as a thermostat. Uh, I hooked that up. I hooked the lower rat hose up. There was a couple um, drains on the block on either side. I put those back in and then on the engine before I forgot I filled up the EGR port with a plug and then also the back of the manifold with a plug. I could see forgetting that and then firing it up and wondering why I have a massive vacuum leak. Uh, move this up out of the way of the tire. And then, oh yeah. So then there's upper bump, bump stops. You can sort of see it right there. There and then on the other side. You can see it was a blue car originally. Anyway, I took those out to give more clearance for lift. And then we got to get the ride height set before they do the alignment. So probably when I get there tomorrow, I'll sit in the driver's seat and have him adjust the height um, so it's even with me in it. And then we'll get on with the alignment. So the alignment through research, uh, what I'm going to do is um, raise raise the car, the front, about an inch, inch and a half to simulate going down the track. So we want zero to a sixteenth of an inch toe-in, uh, preferably zero. Then we want zero camber, straight up and down. And then we want all of the negative caster we can get. So the, so the, the up and down axis of the wheel, we want angled as far back as we can. Uh, that's a self-centering um, setup where you know the the car will want to right itself if you get a little shape or whatever. Um, the idea behind that is it wants to go straight. Anyway, I'm hoping with those uh, changes should uh, pick up a little bit of time and speed on the on the uh, quarter mile, and then these bigger front tires, and then uh, we'll get to. Uh, adjusting the timing get that where it's got to be but I won't do that at home I think I'll do that maybe on the way home from the alignment shop I will uh, just pull over in the middle of nowhere and uh, set the timing uh, rate on the back of my deck truck where it's not going to bother anybody because you got to rev it up and all that kind of stuff so anyway I'll get busy moving other trucks Okay, the moment of truth, we're gonna start this puppy up. I cleaned out the path in front. I used the Bobcat to tow the two trucks out of the way. So we got a clean, clean path for takeoff. I'm gonna leave the hood off because after I shut it off, I just wanna check for leaks and stuff. So we'll run around the back here. Gonna turn on the power. Uh, shut this. I haven't run this car since, well, last August, last time I raced it. So it's been almost a year, which is pretty sad. I'll hop in here. Uh, so this thing is loud. I look forward to trying it with all these changes. Okay, so. We got a switch panel down here. Fuel on. You can hear it. I'm gonna see until we get 
fuel pump up and fuel pressure. There's fuel in there, it should be going up. Um, I'll put cooling on. Uh, what are we doing here? Put the cooling on. That's the electric fan and electric water pump. Uh, we've got ignition on. Let's uh, try start here. We have no fuel pressure. Now I had this problem last year. What was it? It was just low on fuel or what? Why do we have no fuel pressure? Could be just out of fuel or low on fuel. Yeah, we got this on. Fuel is on. Okay, well, we'll sort out this fuel problem because it ain't working. Back in a minute. Well, I don't know if a uh, float is stuck on the carburetor or not. I tap the float bowls with the handle of a screwdriver. I'm going to manually fill them just in case. Maybe it'll jar something loose. I mean, it will obviously run with these full, but I don't know what's going on, but it's not getting fuel, so it could just be because it's been sitting for so long. So, look at these filled up. Okay, we're dumping out of the boosters. Oops, Go from this side. Now, I gotta think it's gonna fire right up with this. Oh, it's run out of the boosters, so. Okay, I guess we'll put this aside and see what happens. I suspect we're gonna hear lots of noise, but if it's, I wonder if it's gonna just run out of fuel once the carb empties. Try this again. Cool. Fuel pump, ignition. Yeah, it was loud. Ah, fuel ran out, I think, already. Okay. Might have to. Pull the carburetor apart or something, see what's going on here. Take two. Okay, once again, I just filled the carburetor again, so it should fire right away. But I don't know, it's not going to stay run. i got to figure out why i got no fuel pressure. But I want to get it to the front of my shop so it's not so loud for the people directly behind me. Okay, here comes the loudness. God, I love this. Still no fuel pressure though. Doesn't take long to empty that carburetor. <sighs> What's going on here? Actually have to take something apart. Damn it.
Well, if you look at the sight glass in the secondary, and if I wiggle the car, well, you probably can't see, but there's fuel in the secondary bowl. And I thought, well, I didn't see anything in the primary. So I thought I would take this, it's got a clear plastic sight glass. I thought I would take it off and screw it, but it just broke off in my hand. See right there. So now I'll try and get that out. Where is it? There, right there. Try and unscrew that and uh, see if I can see a blockage. I might have to take this float bowl off. I just got another brass plug from another Holly. I'll stick that in for now. Fun and games. Okay, so I ended this fuel pressure regulator and some gas came out. But I think it might be just gas from that I poured in there. So I had Shauna flick the fuel pump and there's nothing. So it's something at the far end, at the back end. With uh, I'll probably take it apart and check the filter and stuff. But I still have to take this float bowl off because... I've got to get that sight plug out and put the metal one in and it's half broken off so I'll have a look and make sure this is not all crusty inside. I feel the gas dripping out which is odd. Anyway, continue on here. Well I got the bowl off and it looks pretty clean in there, there's no issues. Um, there's a little bit of crusty is on the bottom but not very much and then at the very back when I move the float I can see the the needle moving which is my concern was initially that maybe the needle stuck but that's not the problem so I will get that sight glass out somehow and get the metal one in I'll put this back together hopefully I didn't tear the gasket it doesn't look too bad but of course it doesn't look too great either but I don't think I have any I'm not sure uh, but I'll, I'll pull the fuel pump out and see what's going on back there. Maybe it's just mucked up inside or something. I don't know. Anyway, continues. Well, I had to drill out the plastic plug. There's no way of coming out. And you got to be careful because there's only probably two threads holding that plug in because this is so thin. Anyway, it's done. Uh, I gave it a spray of brake clean. Now I'm just going to cinch up these bolts, but I think I'll take the filter apart um, in the back where the pump is. The pump is physically turning on, but there's some kind of blockage somewhere. I've got, I should have enough fuel. Uh, you know, it's over the foam there, but maybe I'll try a bit more in there. I don't know. I had this problem last time, and uh, it was just low on fuel, but... You can physically see the fuel in there, so I'm not sure, but maybe that'll be the best thing to do is fill up the tank and then um, see if that does it. Could be something so simple. Well, it's kind of a, a weird situation. I put more gas in here, I tried it, thinking you know maybe too, it was too low, but it was above the foam membrane. And unfortunately, it was just regular gas I had. I, I didn't put too much in. I didn't fill it or anything. Anyway, that made no difference. You can see it here. So I'm going to have to put a bit of octane boost in there just for that little bit. There's probably half a tank of uh, 94 Chevron, which is what I normally use. Anyway, uh, this is the filter the pump, obviously. I undid this line in front of the pump. It poured gas out, which was weird. So the pump is working, so I screwed it back together and turned on the switch and now everything's fine. So I don't know if maybe there's an airlock in there or something. I, I would think an electric pump would come overcome that, but anyway, let's fire this puppy up. Okay, let's do this again and of course this time it'll be good. So I'll put the cool on, fuel pump on, you can see that fuel pressure there. We're up to about uh, eight and a half, seven, now we're at eight pounds. So that's good. We had zero, uh, hit ignition, and fire. Give it a couple pumps. 
Okay, we got oil pressure, lots of oil pressure. I'll get this up on the truck here before so I don't have to run it too long. Again, like I said, I don't want to run it too long and piss off the neighbors, but that was just a few minutes. So we've got fuel pump or fuel pressure. We got everything. So he's back to normal. Anyway, I will uh, load things up. Hey, Shauna being goofy. Uh, I'll load things up here and get it ready for the for the alignment tomorrow. Well, doesn't that look badass? So I'm going to pump all the tires up where I want them for pressure. And I'm going to have a look and see what side or adjust the height where I roughly want it. Um, probably go a little higher on that. And of course the back is just fine the way it is. Did you look at the back here? Yeah, it looks pretty cool big fat slicks and then of course the Dana 60 with a 456 and a spool um, it's got Caltrax it's got 20 way adjustable shocks rebound and dampen and so once I get back from the alignment I'm gonna get in the shop and I'm gonna clean everything up under here and change tranny fluid, adjust the bands, change engine oil, filter, and then play around with my suspension and and uh, try and get things figured out that way. Anyway, I just thought I would give a little shot here. We're on a bit of a hill, but so the truck car's not level, but you get the gist of it. It's got the big Big fat tire back end on it, which I just love. It's so retro. And of course, when I first seen the car, I thought, wow, red, white, and blue. What's this, an American car or, you know, AMC? But if you guys think about it back in the 60s, uh, Plymouth had red, white, and blue on their, uh, on their colors, on their emblems. And I've got a Fury with a red, white, and blue. So anyway, that's what they were going after. But looks pretty cool. So I gotta get the hood on there as well. So anyway, keep plugging away. Well, that's it. It's all buttoned down, strapped on, ready to go. And I brought a couple of the rollers for the back, just in case the back tires here are too big for his rack or he can't get it lined up, I'm not sure. Uh, ideally, I'd like it aligned with the fat tires since the ass sits up higher but I'll bring these just in case and the uh, matching lug nuts because uh, the mag wheels use a different style. And then, yeah, that's it for tonight and we'll see you tomorrow.
around here, man. Don't worry about that. It's a nice car, man. Yeah, it, it works. It does. They, uh, they've done the well that everything, you know, the combination works. Now I'll, uh, I'll switch things up to try and make it go faster, and I'll probably screw it all up. You only hope, right? Trial and error. Trial and error. If it goes the right way, you're happy. If it doesn't, try again. Well, we are back from the alignment store, uh, tire shop. It didn't go well. They got it on. I left it with them. I had to do some work and um, came back, or they messaged me, and both upper ball joints have play. The strut rod bushings are old and cracked, which I knew about. The lower pivot on the lower control arm have movement so bottom line is front end needs a rebuild i did the inner and outer tie rods pitman arm and idler arm when i bought the car uh, but these other items need doing as well so i'm going to race it as is i've been racing it like this for two years and there's no no issues as far as you know wandering or pulling or, or rattling it all it drives fine uh, I'll put it on the hoist in my shop and see if I can improve the alignment on the front end just, you know, uh, as it is. And then uh, I'll have to order some parts and uh, rebuild all that, which is, you know, 50-year-old stuff, right? That's just the way it goes. It's just that I'm running out of time. I've only got two weeks until the, the race is at mission, and I, I'm not going to pull it apart and jeopardize not going uh, with that. Uh, like I said, it, it runs and drives fine, so it's not scrubbing the tires, but uh, it's not ideal for sure. So anyway, um, just going to move some stuff around and get it in the shop and get underneath. We're going to change oil and uh, transmission fluid. One thing I forgot to mention on the way home, because I, I wanted to adjust the timing on this car, and of course you got to have it running and uh, rev it up a bit and stuff to get your full uh, timing uh, adjusted anyway i didn't want to do that in the neighborhood here so on the way home halfway home i pulled out on a you know a, a desolate area of the road where there's no houses or anything and fired it up and and timed it right on my truck so it was at about 29 30 and now it's at about 35 36 so we'll go with that and uh see how much we can improve and to change oil and service a tranny, I bought new stuff. And this is what $225 gets you in Canada. We got uh, two jugs of this. These were 55 bucks each or 54 or something like that. And then two jugs of this. This was, uh, I think, about 38 or $36 each. Anyway, it's like... How's the heck a guy supposed to go racing, you know, with these kind of prices? I guess it's first world problems. Okay, I had to move this one the other day. I just rolled it out with the Bobcat, but I'm going to get it running. I've just hooked up a gas can down to the fuel filter to the fuel pump and fire it up so at least it's mobile and then I can move it around at will. I did start this truck last year when I first got it. It had been sitting for oh, at least 25 years, but I think it ran in that time to some degree, but it was never insured in that time on the road. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get it running now so I can move it around the yard and just makes it easier when you gotta do the shuffle here. So I'm gonna get some gas pour in the carburetor and we'll fire this up. Okay, pop that off. Bit of fresh gas down there. Let's see if this is gonna fire. I think the keys are still in it. The truck just runs mint. There we go. Oh, I forgot the uh, starter makes funny noises. Got lots of starters, it's just a matter of 
putting it in. I'm gonna go see if the fuel pump's even picking up on this hose. This hose is way too long. Maybe I'll cut it back. Yeah, there's there's nothing coming out of here. I think I'll uh, cut this way shorter, make it a little easier. Okay, cut it in half, put some more gas down and see if we can get it to start pulling, pulling fuel. And we can move this thing around. cranking. Nice starter. At least it still cranks. I'm just trying to see. I don't see anything pumping on that hose. Ah, I'll go have another look. Flames coming out of there. Well, this is not cooperating. Making a liar out of me seeing it run so nice. Well, what's supposed to be a quick and easy fire up and move the truck around has turned into a project on its own. It's not sucking fuel from my gas can, so the line is clear, so either uh, the fuel filter's plugged or the pump is bad. I mean, it's not surprising if the diaphragm from the pump was bad, but it's turned into a whole nother project and I'm supposed to be getting the Barracuda in the, in the shop. So I'll get back to that. It's getting late and of course I still have to fire the car up. Here's another one that's in the way, 70 Charger. This one does start. Of course, I said that about the other truck too. Um, put this here so I can see. We just do that to protect the interior. Uh, huh. It's gonna be hard to see. Anyway, mouse trap inside. Uh, let's see if we're gonna get this to start. The battery's been weak on this one since it hasn't been driven, so. Give it a try. What I find is uh, with this modern gas is it evaporates out of the carburetors after a few days, a couple days, even one day, especially in the heat. So every time you want to go start something, you got to pump the crap out of it and, and crank it forever. go. Now this one sounds really bad because it's got a nasty uh, exhaust leak at the manifold. I put a new gasket on it but uh, the manifold's warped. It needs to be machined so um, this is the way it is at the moment. That's a little pressure, almost 80. Um, but anyway I'll get this out of the way and then I gotta get the Wiper out of the way. It's not focusing on anything but the dust. And then um, there is a brand X up there. Maybe I'll go it this way. The wiper out of the way, and then a brand X. And then I'll bring the Barracuda in. Well, here's the brand X car that I was talking about. It's actually a really nice car. It's a 73 Z28. It's got a 383 stroker in it, turbo 400. Um, yeah, 
really nice car. Anyway, at the moment, it's in my way. So I'm going to fire this up and get it out. I'll let you hear this thing. Really comfy seats. Sounds pretty good. Hate to say it. Don't tell any of my Mopar buddies. Actually, to be honest, I'd have no problem driving this car around. My kid's gonna bring his Camaro uh, tomorrow. He's got a 67 Camaro SS. Oh, I think the park brake is on. Oh, ha. no, I forgot to take the rubber blocks out of the wheels. Stand by. Sounds pretty good. It actually goes really good too. It's a pretty fast car. Anyway, my kid is bringing his Camaro tomorrow, 67 SS. And we think he might have blown his head gasket, so going to do a compression check and confirm it. And uh, maybe... Uh, Rip the heads off it. Okay. I'll try this different. Use this as my backup camera. Yeah, uh, obviously I uh, love Mopars the best, but in all honesty, you gotta you gotta give credit where credit is due. You know, they all all brands made some nice cars. Make sure I don't smash this thing up. And uh, yeah, can't uh, can't fault this car at all. It's actually a pretty comfortable car. It's like a like a gentleman's hot rod also known as an old man's hot rod and I'm an old man anyway we'll go park this okay time to fire the beast up go and turn the power on and and it's gonna get loud it's almost eight o'clock in the evening here, so I don't want to wait too much longer. <clears throat> okay. We got water pump, fuel, ignition, and fire.
Yeah, she's loud. Anyway, we'll get her up. Here's a little underview of the car. Um, let's see if we get a bit of leakage out of here. Should probably be resealed. Feels like silicone there. Anyway, we'll spray that off, clean it up. I'm gonna check my shock settings, my uh, compression and rebound right here. Get that optimized. Um, these rear tires have wheel spacers on them. If you can look, you see we're really close to the frame up there. If you can see there, um, it's really close in there. Same with same with this side. This side does rub a little bit. There's a lot of bulge on the tire, and it does that. I think at the end of the track, when I'm turning off the track, there's just a bit of movement it touches. And you can see it here, but it's not making, a, it's just basically a dust mark. It's not, um, you know, digging into the tire or anything. I had to put a pinion seal in it. When I first got it, it was leaking pretty good, but uh, these being a, a shim style, you just zip this off, pop it on, zip it back on, and you're good to go. Um, got a lot of what's going on here. Seems to be a lot of wetness right here. See, this side's dry. This side's soaking wet and tacky with some kind of oil. Well, I better look into that. Maybe it's coming out of the overflow here. I don't know. Anyway, that's not good. And that's why we're here to check things out. You can see the full frame connectors down both sides. Uh, the drive shaft loop, and then we've got uh, both extensions off the headers. Go under here. So I'm going to drop the pan, change the fluid, uh, adjust the bands, uh, change oil, filter, and then just basically check for any loose items. Um, so as far as the alignment goes, you've got your lower pivot here, bolts through the cross member, coming off your lower control arm. Anyway, there's a bushing in there. That one's uh, worn out. Uh, that's one thing he cited. These strut bushings are original. They're worn out. And I noticed that the other night, but of course I didn't have time to change them, so I just left it. Uh, top ball joint right there it's got some play and the upper control arm bushings are all cracked and rotted as you'd expect so anyway i have been racing it like this it feels fine it drives fine so i'll just see uh you know if i can prove it at all and otherwise i'll just leave it for now we've got new tie rods new fitment arm new idler arm and then more tie rods. I did that uh, a couple years ago before I started racing. This is the way I got it. It was pretty loose. Uh, this idler arm was moving up and down before it started the turn. So what that equates to is your steering wheel, you know, going half a turn, you know, side to side before you even steer the car. Anyway, that's it for now. And uh, I'll turn the camera on later. Here we are again, another day in the shop. Got the Barracuda on the lift. I've got the front end sitting where I want it. I want just a bit of space on those front wheels. And I think it's uh, got a good rake compared to what's going on at the back here, the big tires. So we'll leave it at that. They're even side to side. So uh, since I can't get it aligned until I replace all those front end parts, um, we'll just leave it at that. I was kind of thinking, since I need upper control arm bushings, because these are just cracked originals, and also ball joints, that I might consider buying the tubular upper control arms with the bushings and the ball joint already installed. I can get a, they generally make them with a, uh, you can get a bit more caster on them, which is uh, which would help, and they might be a little stronger. So I'll look into that, see what the price difference is going to be, and whether I feel like spending money. And then 
Uh, oh, my buddy was just here, Ron. He suggested I check the cap. I never even gave it a second thought. And anyway, it looks pretty crusty inside. So I'm going to grab a cap and rotor. It's an MSD. There's a number there. So hopefully it looks like a GM style. So hopefully it's not a hard, a really expensive part to get. So anyway, we'll switch that out. Uh, what else did I do? I adjusted. I wasn't quite getting full throttle, just a little bit. So we adjusted that here with this threaded rod. Um, could be just because of the intake situated a little different, but we'll see. Uh, although it idled just fine, so hmm, maybe I wasn't getting full throttle all the time. I don't know. So that's done. Um, I'm just about to change the oil now. I'll get it up in the air and get that expensive oil put in there. Okay, got the oil drained out. I'm just about to do the filter. See, this thing is just about done. Um, of course, the big block Dodge, we have the filter right here. I've got it loose. I'm going to try uh, the old cut jug trick. I had this laying in the recycle bin. Anyway, I'm going to put it on here and try and catch a lot of the soil that's going to otherwise pour and run all over the cross member here. So I've never actually done this. I've been heard about it and people doing it for years. So I'll give it a shot here. Um, it just barely, barely uh, gets to the end of the filter here. So we'll see if this is going to work at all. Ready to loosen it a bit more. Okay. So we are all the way on there. Oh, I can see oil dripping out or dripping into the jug as you can see here. So maybe if I don't catch it all, at least maybe I can catch most of it and uh, try and minimize the mess going on. It's one thing I never liked about the, the big block Dodges is how they, they do their filters here. But looks like this was a success. Filters in, oil is contained. Got a bit of drip in there, but uh, that shouldn't be too bad to uh, clean up with a paper towel here. In fact, we'll put that right on the bottom to soak that up. Okay, mission accomplished. Okay, I went with a Fram Racing HP1 oil filter. I filled it about halfway with the oil and then rolled it around. Normally I like to fill my Oil filter's right full, but of course we can't do this on this angle here, but a little bit's better than nothing. Um, get that on there. And then I showed you how I bought that expensive oil yesterday. And then I was just looking around, I realized I had this, I bought off a neighbor. Um, he had a circle track, uh, what are those cars called? Sprint car. And he sold it and he doesn't race anymore. So this is basically the same stuff I bought, a uh, different brand of course, 2050 high zinc formula. Anyway, I got them off of him for about 250 a liter and there's about, I don't know, 12 or 15 of them. So I'm gonna put that in instead of the other I just bought. And uh, I was thinking, oh, well, I'll just take it back. But the reality is pretty much all my cars use that. So if I don't use it now, you know, I'll use it shortly. What is this here? It's got some kind of funky, some weird gasket on this pan. Anyway, get that in there. Lower it down and fill it with oil. I'm not even sure how much it takes. This is a custom deep pan, so it's probably seven or eight liters anyway. It's full of oil. I put in eight quarts, which is a quart's just shy of a liter. Anyway, I figured it'd be something around there. We'll look on the dipstick. It is completely full to the line, so I'm going to just fire it up, fill up the oil filter, let it settle, and then uh, check it again. 
think we got everything else buttoned up. That should be enough to fill up the oil filter. I don't want my neighbors to hate me any more than they already do. So I'll let that settle and uh, check it again and it should be good. Some of the other aspects of going racing for the weekend is getting everything ready. So I picked this up last fall or last summer. Uh, it was quite cheap and runs excellent. So I'm just charging the battery and you know, fill it with fresh gas and stuff. And that'll be the, the pit bike. This is the trailer I'm using. So I'm gonna have to find a home for this piece of junk. Um, get it off there and then get the Barracuda loaded. And then this is the tow rig. This shouldn't need much other than fresh gas and check the fluids and, and tire pressure and stuff. But my buddy Ken and I will be camping the weekend at the racetrack in this. And it's actually, as long as it's not too hot and we need AC, it's actually, you know, reasonably comfortable. So I've got to get that ready, the trailer and the Vespa. So the work continues. Well, I think I'll cut the video off here. Um, I do have more stuff to get to. I got to do the transmission yet and some other things. Um, I won't get on to this video. I'd kind of like to upload it since it's been almost a week. So, and then I got to help my son with his Camaro. He's got a 67 Camaro SS and we think he might've blown a head gasket. So I've got to do a compression check and stuff on that. So uh, we'll leave this video here for now and uh, we'll do a little update uh, shortly once we uh, completely finish this. Thanks for watching. Pile of Mopars.